Read number six. Leave room for mystery. A number of years ago, I was uh, in Chicago as a consultant on uh, the Gary Oldman film, The Unborn. It's a terrible film. But uh, I uh, had an afternoon off, and so uh, not having a whole lot of money at the time and uh, loving architecture as I do, I went off on a Green Man tour of Chicago. I just sort of walked around and looked for all the great uh, building sculptures that I could find. Uh, I went past a big old uh, uh, Gothic-style Presbyterian church and I thought, oh, there will be a lot of good Green Men in there. So I uh, popped in. As a matter of fact, there were no Green Men in the church at all. Um, but I went around and looked at a lot of interesting stuff and uh, afterwards I stopped and talked with the docent who was a member of the congregation. Um, I asked him some questions. Uh, I must have mentioned uh, Eastern Orthodoxy at some point uh, because he made the assumption that I was Eastern Orthodox and he told me a story. Uh, this man uh, serves as docent in this congregation quite a bit. It's a very, very beautiful, very uh, artistically interesting church. And uh, so he told me a story of a tour group of students from uh, Wheaton College, which is a college in Illinois. I don't know whether it's a specifically denominational college or not, but it's, it's generally very, very conservative Christian. Uh, and uh, these kids were out uh, uh, for a um, uh, comparative religions class. Uh, and so they were uh, supposed to attend worship services at different, uh, all of them apparently were Christian denominations, so much for comparative religion, and uh, let's see, and then write about them. So he asked the students, uh, which kind of tells you something about the quality of uh, this gentleman, uh, he asked the students which had been the most interesting and satisfying of their worship experiences, and almost without exception, they all said they liked best the Greek Orthodox. When he asked them why, they said, because there was a sense of mystery there. I've been to many Greek and Russian and Syrian Orthodox services myself, and I can personally testify to the fact that this is true. It is, uh, if you have never been to Orthodox Easter, you have never been to a good ritual in your life. It is unforgettable. It is an amazing liturgical experience. I would recommend it, highly recommend it to every liturgist. Um, but the sense of touching the other, the sense of communication with the mystery, and I would define mystery as being that, that, mm, let's see here. I would define mystery as the radically other. And I think that the, the work of liturgy is to enable us to both individually and collectively touch that radically other. This is, uh, uh, so in, in other words, what we're talking about here is a, a technology of mystagogy because this sense can be induced by what we do in ritual. The Orthodox do it routinely. How do we go about doing this? Well, there are a number of different ways and uh, uh, let's see, and, and we will certainly certainly touch more on them later. Uh, among the most important things is that one should never explain in ritual. Things that are explained thereby lose their mystery. If you have to give people a lecture before the ritual that tells them the meaning of the ritual, if you have to explain the symbolism then the symbolism is failed symbolism, the ritual is a failed ritual. Explanations are a buzzkill. Explanations take you out of that mystical state. If something needs to be explained, then you should do it with the liturgy. 
if you if people need information about a particular god it is much better it is infinitely better to incorporate this information into the invocation that they're you're using uh, that is infinitely preferable to giving a lecture, even a little speech beforehand about who this god is and why you are invoking him. That should all be worked right into the ritual itself. I'm reminded of the pre-Vatican II Catholic Mass, uh, which was renowned for its ability to instill that sense of contact with mystery, um, in which the priest is up in front doing something sacred which doesn't immediately engage us. Meanwhile, we the worshipers are here in the church itself, maybe praying the rosary or thinking or uh, entering into the beauty of the entire space or whatever. But uh, so in some ways the, this, this principle works at, uh, uh, at loggerheads with the previous read of doing things together, we also need to be careful in our rituals to give people space to have their own experience. And this is at the heart of priestcraft, it seems to me. We have a tendency to over-explain. It's not necessary for everyone to hear or understand every word that is said during the course of the ritual. It is important not to engage people at all times. It is the job of the ritualist to provide people with the opportunity for an experience. It is not the ritualist's job to interpret the experience for people. We give them the opportunity to have the experience. They have their own experience and make of it what they will. This is one of the places in which the mystery enters in. Read number six, leave room for mystery.